early here because I cannot emphasize enough that this straight is like a European straight. It takes a little bit of seeing out the distance. And you do so admire Trevor McKee and his connections there and uh, taking the international challenge, going to Hong Kong, now coming to Dubai. Trevor's made it very clear, John. Obviously, the mayor will tell him, but uh, at this point, he's considering a, a, even another season with Sunline, who now is age five. Well, I, you know, Charlie Whitting and Woody Stevens would always tell you that a horse reached its physical and mental peak at five. So I think he's absolutely right, and they become total professionals. Uh, I'd say Greg Charles player. has his game face on, the jockey. The man is concentrating hard and quite right. No joking and laughing for him down the start. This is serious business. She looks exceptionally well in her coat, I must say. Golden Soka, the 14 here, uh, bred in England. Craig Williams riding. Yes, uh, nice tough filly by Inchinore, trained by Mick Channon, ridden by Craig Williams. She's won a listed race at Epsom. She's uh, won the Desmond Stakes at the Curra, a great feat, beating the Colts. She was second to Mahouf here, who's also in this race, and that Al-Sheba. She's tough and journey, and she's drawn towards the outside, 14-14, as the number of 14 her draw as well. Uh, it's not an easy one to come from, but she's a really tough little filly. Whether she's up to this class now at this stage is another question. Interesting distance, John, is there at the barrier now, 1,777 meters, uh, just over eight furlongs. Yes, it's, it, it, Frankie Wright says it rides like nine, it rides like a mile and an eighth, but uh, you need to see the distance out. They're loading up now, with three or four left out the back. Sunline now uh, with the saddle towel to 15, but she drew number nine, will be able to spot her easily in those uh, pale blue soaks and the orange and yellow sleeves and the yellow cap as you watch her progress. Sunline will be coming out of barrier number nine. Yep, and that's number five on the screen with David Flores, winner of two hugely valuable races tonight, riding for Godolphin, Happy Diamond. This is a tough little cookie, this horse. So distance might be a little short for him, but expect him to be putting a big run at the end. He went to Singapore, got a respiratory infection, flew back here again, and he's ready to roll here tonight. There's a stall's blanket being used. This is the Monty Robert stall's blanket for horses that didn't feel any claustrophobia around them. Sumatan, Shamrock City going forward, so is Happy Diamond. Swallow Flight midfield on the outside of Jim and Tonic, and Golden Silk and Ladies Din and Perry King Prawn. Arcadian Hero third last on the inside of Prolix and Eagle Cafe had dropped out to the tail of the field. Slickly the leader, turning down the side towards the 1200 metres mark. Sunline and Echo A in second spot. Happy Diamond is third, but three deep on the outside of Super Taz and Mark Futh on the rail. A length and a half to Jim and Tonic, followed by Swallow Flight, Shamrock City, Prolix. Then Golden Silver in front of Ladies Din, Perry King Prawn, Arcadian Hero, and Eagle Cafe is two lengths away at the tail as they travel down towards the final bend. Sunline's gone to the front, approaching the 800 metres mark, and the glamour mare from the land of the long white cloud had hit the front. It's Sunline, two lengths clear, on slickly as they come to the final bend. Prolix moving up deep, Happy Diamond in the centre as they round the corner, and Sunline sets her sights on the big prize. 600 metres to run, and Sunline in front, slickly on the rail. Prolix goes up on the outside, followed by Mark Fulton and Jim and Tonic beginning to run on. Sunline's in front, slickly on the
bravely out to Fairy King Prawn. But that streak's a long so streak. Jim and Johnny came front. to win it, and then King Prawn came on the outside. He had it, Fairy King Prawn had it one, and Jim and Connick just gained them between the two. But a phenomenal race. Outstanding, we'll take a look. Ding Dong again, Sunlight is on the rail. Battling inside, Jim and Tonic on the outside. It's Fairy King Prawn as they come to the wire here. Robert Brown, Fairy King Prawn of the right-handed whip, giving it all. You see Greg Charles, he hasn't given up there as he has the rail, but he's beaten now. Now it comes to Jim and Tonic. You're almost saying the outstanding French jockey. He knows how to get into the wire. And you watch Jim and Tonic just to hit the wire, put your head down, and the seven-year-old has done it again in his seventh international country. Yes, he's uh, just a wonderful horse. You're looking at the three best in the race on form. They've run hard all the way. There's hardly anything between them. But he's outgained them, and he's got that little bit more stamina than the, the, the Hong Kong and the great filly from New Zealand. Russell Devan has to be just over the moon, John. Uh, this one is really special to him, John Tommy. Yes, I mean, I think uh, he's, he's the star of the horse is double bed, and I think Russell probably sleeps with him half the time. I mean, he's in love with the horse. Mosse rides him particularly well. They had an argument one time about a year ago, but he does know when to bring a run with this horse, and it was a greatly timed run because it definitely looked like Fairy Queen Corn had got it and revenged the defeat in the Hong Kong Mile by Sunline, but this boy came between them and stuck his neck out and won it. John, was the difference the uh, uh, three furlong, three eighths of a mile stretch? Yes, I think the stretch at Sharp Tin is easier to get than this one. Frankie de Tory was on slickly with Greg Charles. They were up front. Frankie was rating his horse. They weren't going crazy. They went a really sensible pace. Two jockeys, two brilliant professional men in front know their game. No one was going too fast. She just ran out of stamina the last part. No more than that. She's a great filly at a mile, but this extra little distance, this extra length of stretch just caught her out, and these two boys came. That's the stable lad of Jim and Tonic. You talk about emotions in this. This lad has traveled the world with his seven-year-old uh, gelding. The emotions are pouring out tonight here in Not All Sheba. Well, yes, because the old boy did look like he'd lost, lost his form a little bit. And, uh, and here he's come back and, and put everyone in their place. And a very sporting gesture from uh, the rider of the second horse as he goes past Gerald Mosse. Yeah, yeah. He's such a lovely old girl in this. It's so wonderful to see a great five-year-old mare, a great seven-year-old girl in racing. We don't get nearly enough of that in Europe. Uh, far too much of our older horses disappear abroad, and it's great to see these horses. Uh, what, what emotion for the lad, and it says so much again about the bonding between the, the lads and these horses. They work so hard, John. Don't get a whole lot of attention, usually, but he's in the international spotlight right beside of François Dumas. Yes, I couldn't agree more. I mean, he will know that horse uh, better than he knows himself. And there's a very, very valiant uh, second. Great performance by Ivan Allen's horse. Uh, and, and really running within a pound of the form with Sunlines from Hong Kong. Great training achievement by the trainers of these two fine horses, the second and third, to bring them all around the world, to bring them back again, and have them run within a pound of what they ran before. Some people forget how hard it is to peak these horses like this. And I think people sometimes lose sight of the fact that while Sheikh Mohammed, this was his vision. Well, of course, he's so competitive. Yes, he has the world's greatest racing stable, Godolphin. But I know he's getting as much pleasure out of this, John, a, a winner from Japan, a winner from America, and now a winner from France. A winner from France with a second from Hong Kong and a third from New Zealand. That's what it's all about. Great international racing. They've come from all around the world here. There's the new grandstand in the back. I've been up in it. It's the most wonderful place. And uh, Gerard Mosse. A very cool rider, a man who never gets flustered. And for Francois Dumas, a great moment. His uh, Cheltenham hopes were dashed when the meeting was cancelled with his fine uh, Cheltenham Gold Cup horse. But to come here and win this is, is certainly the right gym and tonic for him. Uh, Jim and Tonic has just uh, been superb. He mentioned uh, his first run since the Hong Kong Cup uh, when he lost out to Fantastic Live in the final leg of the Emirates World Series for 2000. The Free Perth, he had won that race. Uh, it's on clue. Uh, has traveled the world, really, and uh, uh, made himself a true international star in horse racing and well deserved for these connections tonight. Very much so. They've, they've always traveled everywhere. They've never really bothered so much with the racing at home. They merely use the racing in France as a prep race for international travel. And I always tell him, I said, you always take your holidays with your horse, and he tells me he does. <laughs> well, he picked a good spot here in Dubai, and how much he's enjoyed it this week, and now he's enjoying it a lot more, because this was the $2 million Dubai duty-free for the first place prize of $1.2 million. Jim and Tonic owned by John David Martin, a seven-year-old gelding by a double bed of the Jim French.
French mayor, Jamaica, bred in France. And uh, oh, just a great performance. You take a look at the official result. Jim and Tonic, who's sent off with Perry King Pond, just about the same odds of 9 to 2, finishing 1 2. Sunline, the 7 to 4 favorite, Greg Childs, getting the show spot. But as John said so well, that is uh, France, that is uh, Hong Kong, and there is New Zealand, Australia. You just don't get better than that in international racing. No, that is uh, very much so, and they've come from so far around, but Dubai is strategically well placed, of course. Uh, it, it's, it, in a way, it's halfway between Europe and halfway between the Far East, set on the Gulf, so it's a great place to travel. The Americans and the Japanese have a slightly longer journey, but not so much the Japanese, but they've made it and won the Dubai World <laughs> Cup, and there's a very happy, very debonair French trainer, Francois Dumas. Uh, to so have a horse like that is very much the dream of a lifetime trainer. And as a gelding, of course, uh, his prospects, of course, are racing and more racing, and he sure seems to show he enjoys it. I think he does. I think the old boy raises his game when he gets on those frequent fire flights at 30,000 feet, and he comes and races. He likes fast ground. The ground rides good, good to firm here on the fast side. There's a very happy Gerard Moss. very happy indeed. He does know how to time the run with that. He's certainly won enough races getting there late. He got in trouble for getting there too late. Absolutely, oh, paddy, quand même. <laughs> responded not only to Jim and Tonic on his return, but a very nice gesture of Sunline came back too. A real nice round of applause for the uh, champion mayor. Well, there it is, and I don't suppose you'd see a more poignant shot uh, than that strapper going out to collect uh, Jim and Tonic, and with the tears streaming down down his face. And uh, there are the uh, there's a shot in the uh, jockey's room, uh, the winning rider, Gerald Mosse. A good ride too, wasn't it? Well, there's that uh, happy strapper. <laughs> um, I don't want to see him when he's sad, uh, but a lot of emotion there. Uh, Greg Charles, let's might go back to Dubai. Here's Greg Charles. It was a crack of a race. That's right. Um, she got into a favourite position with a thousand metres to run. Um, the horse sickly early was uh, just you know wanted to lead. He was pretty keen to, to take the lead, so. I sat off him a little, um, the mare started to pull a little, they don't like me to hold on to it too much, so uh, at the 1,000 we got into her favourite position, she dominated the race from that point on, um, I didn't go too fast, I didn't think it was just nicely run, I waited till she was well balanced, she asked for an effort, she kicked, but the other two kicked that little bit better and were too good. Was the long stretch here, Greg, the uh, three for a long, three eighths of a mile, was it a factor? Uh, yeah, look, you know, you can sit down and analyse it and you could say this and you could say that. But at the end of the day, we were beaten by two better horses. Um, the long straight, sure, you know, it doesn't help, but, you know, they ain't going to give it to you. <laughs> well, here he comes. Sunlight right now is on the lead. You put away slickly on the inside of you, but the danger, of course, is coming outside of Very King Prod and the old veteran. Jim and Tonic, you've hooked Very King Prod in the past. Yeah, that's right. Um, look, she kicked, she tried. She had no answer. And, you know, we've got no excuse. They were just too good on the night. But Sunlight surely did nothing to diminish her reputation. Right? No, she was only, you know, like, she was only three quarters of a length behind the winner. And, uh, you know, she won, a, she won in Shards in the Hong Kong Mile, and she won third here. So you can't have it all your own way, but she holds her head very high for, the, for down under. She accommodates, you know, she, she, she runs a true and tries hard. She's a great man, and she'll come back. Well, Greg, you're a fine young man, a fine jockey. We appreciate you taking the time to visit with us. I know we'll be back in the winning circle with Sunline. We'll see you down the road in the Emirates World Series. Okay. Thanks very much. Well, there's the uh, presentation taking place for the uh, Dubai Duty Free. Well, there was a sensation in the race in the early stages. Uh, I don't know whether too many Australians would have backed it. Uh, Chris Osil Monaco just dug its toes in and said, I don't want any part of this. Just refused to jump. Terribly embarrassing for the jockey, Olivier Deleuze, but uh, it just refused to jump. Well, the um, final stages of the race again, look, she's travelling there. She's uh, got the better uh, of uh, Slickly, which had been a bit of a pest on the inside. And then about four out, uh, there's Fairy King Prawn coming and just inside it, uh, that's the ultimate winner. Uh, the rather plain looking Jim and Tonic and this is a dogged go to the line you'd think that Fairy King Pawn well in fact got to the front and had the race won but this dogged 
awkward looking goer, uh, Jim and Tony, just kicked and it outstayed them in the run to the line. That, of course, is a horse that's been a 2,000 metre horse and they brought it back to the, um, well, nearly 1,800 metres, the 1,777 metres, a tough staying effort. Look, he's run placing in, placings in good races, uh, Jim and Tonic, so no one, I suppose, could begrudge him the win. Certainly, I don't think that Sunline has lost any fans whatsoever. It was a game gutsy effort and uh, as I pointed out in that interview with Greg Childs, 600 metre run in, but she just looked to be travelling and uh, had it have been at Mooney Valley, you couldn't have put enough on her. But uh, just those other two, and they're, they're top quality gallopers, of course, Fairy King, Prawn and Jim and Tonic, and uh, they just got her down, but she was far from disgraced, hanging on into third place Sunline. Well, that was it, the duty free, won by Jim and Tonic, the one that uh, Richard Friedman said was pretty ugly, but it looked pretty at the finish. And uh, it uh, beat Fairy King Prawn, and uh, gee, must be getting sick of running second, Fairy King Prawn, and Sunline, of course, was third. Well, that's only part of our big coverage in the early hours of this morning uh, from Dubai. Still to come is the Dubai World Cup. Now, this race, or this race, this race meeting, uh, has just made such a big impact and you may wonder where it all began. Here's the story. The $5 million US Dubai World Cup is the richest horse race in the world. In just its fourth year, it achieved Group 1 status in 1998. But how did this dream of Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum become a reality? Why does Dubai's Crown Prince have such a passion for horse racing? One man with a unique perspective is the chief executive of the Emirates Racing Association, Michael Osborne. Sheikh Mohammed came along, I met him at the sales, because we were one of the major sellers over there, and he was the major buyer. And then he sent word to know when it come back to Ireland to sort out a problem that he had with a farm he purchased in Ireland, so that was an easy enough decision. The pair met at the Keeneland sales in 1984. A qualified veterinary surgeon, Osborne at the time was managing a major stud in Kentucky. He returned to his native island to help the Sheikh design stud facilities and later became chairman of the Curra race course. But the Sheikh wanted Osborne to join him full time. He had a lifelong passion for horse racing, fueled by his first win as an owner at Goodwood in 1977. They have a, a profound interest in horses and an amazing understanding of them as a family. And Sheikh Mohammed as a person is the most perceptive mind. He has a vivid memory for horses and what they've done and he's a great appreciation of what of the goodness in horses and the beauty of a horse he's a good horseman himself as you know he's now doing very well in riding endurance races sheikh mohammed convinced osborne to come on board to help establish the godolphin project in 1991 this involved breeding and importing horses to race in a credible environment in the united arab emirates by 1994, 95, we had a good racing program, good handicapping, and everything sort of followed suit then. Proper dope testing and the whole lot. And then the horses started to come to and fro. And then our horses going back. Last in 1996, we got a horse rated for the first time in the international classification. The Emirates now had disease-free status, and the Sheikh was convinced that Dubai was the ideal place for European horses to overwinter. There's no pollution as such. There's endless sunshine if you want it. There's an excellence in feed. There's, there's air-conditioned stables that are re really the state of the art. This You don't I feel any dust or cough or wheeze or sneeze when you go in there. The Emirates Racing Association conducted its first meeting on the 29th of February 1992. There are now six racecourses and eight races of listed status. An International Jockeys Challenge was held at Nad Al Sheba in 1993. But it wasn't until mid-1995 that Sheikh Mohammed first discussed the concept of a world-class race over a mile and a quarter. He wanted it held in October, but Osborne knew that there was too much competition at that time of the year. And I pleaded with him to go in the spring in February or March. And after a lot of uh, argument, we got March. And uh, then, of course, uh, uh, we, I said uh, we'd open it and we'd run it on sand. 
And uh, that was a wise decision, as it turned out, because the star horse of the time was Cigar, and we got him. And everything went to plan in a race that was beamed to 197 countries. Fairy tale of all fairy tales, the horse wins. Mm. You couldn't have written a better script. And of course, everyone then that yeah. really got, and we had quite a substantial amount of betting in, in America on the race. Mm. Although we don't have betting here, mm. the Americans set up their own pool and to bet into a pool over there, and it was quite successful. When Singspiel won the following year, it was another fairy tale. Remember, Singspiel was bred by Sheikh Mohammed back in Kildangan in Ireland. So he was Irish bred and, and, oh, and bred by Sheikh Mohammed, and Sheikh Mohammed owns the, uh, Singspiel's father and mother. So it, it means talk about a family occasion. And I, I haven't been in Kildangan when he was born. And, and, you know, and, and weighed 47 kilos. I mean, and then you see him winning the world's richest race. I never in my life will experience the like of that. Well, there it was. That was the uh, background uh, to uh, the Dubai World Cup. Well, we might have a look back uh, over the previous winners of the Dubai World Cup. And, of course, the inaugural year was 1996. The horse was Cigar, or as the Americans say, Cigar. And Jerry Bailey was the rider. Here's the concluding stages of Cigar and that historic inaugural Dubai World Cup. The shade for the lead with Dame Wynn and Le Cario, one, two and three. Sayonara to the Japanese, the yellow sleeves the inside. White blinkers, it's uh, Le Cario leading. Here comes Cigar, they're past the halfway stage. Dame Wynn's got the split between the pack. I got it getting them covered, it's Pentai making ground the outside. Then comes uh, Hallingen, virtually an all-white jacket as they come to the top of the home run. And this Cigar, he's going a double as they turn for home with three furlongs to go. Le Cario tries to make a race of it. Cigar, the star sleeve jacket. Yellow sleeve here comes Pentire, a Dane we can fight no more. Soul of the Havana has made drive strides through, but Cigar goes for home, a quarter of a mile to go, and Cigar has it, but here comes Soul of the Havana on the outside, and Soul of the Havana come to press for Cigar, America one and two, Pentire back in third, they've got a fur on to go, it's a jewel to the line, and Soul of the Havana on the outside of Cigar, and Cigar is digging deep, he's never had to fight harder, he's coming back, it's going to be Cigar, he's going to take it, and the line Cigar, Well, the winning jockey there was uh, Jerry Bailey. He, of course, was to return to Dubai in 1997, this time carrying those famous Mac Toom colours because um, in uh, 1997, uh, Jerry Bailey partnered the winner uh, that year, uh, which was Sing Spiel. And uh, Sing Spiel, as I said, carried the Mac Toom colours. Lemons Firth with just behind these Hokuta Vega, Bijou Don on the inside and then comes Juggler but they race past the halfway stage now and head across with less than five to go as they run round the second last turn and it's Siphon now who's picked it up for David Flores, Key of Luck is on the outside with Carlos Arias and just behind these on the inside is still Flora Gold making ground on the outside now is Sandpit and Bijou Don was a faller towards the back and now it is Siphon in the lead from Sandpit, Key of luck between horses just after these comes Sing Spiel and then on the inside staying on is Floral Gold but they race down now with a furlong and a half to go it's Sand Pit Siphon and on the far side it's Sing Spiel who's coming there strongly now and racing to the final furlong in the centre Siphon on the inside it's Sing Spiel and Jerry Bailey in the centre Siphon on the outside is Sand Pit then comes Key of Luck but it is Sing Spiel as they race inside the final hundred yards another for Jerry Bailey Sheikh Mohammed wins the Dubai World Cup with Singspiel. Second is Siphon, then comes Sam Pitkey of Luck. Floral Gold after these. Then came 1998. The Godolphin stable was represented by Swain. Unfortunately, had to settle for second prize. This time it was Silver Charm, trained by Bob Baffert, who of course has uh, Captain Silver in this year's race. Here's Silver, uh, Captain Steve, and he is... Um, Silver Charm winning in 1998. And the back marker is Kyoto City. Here they come round towards the home straight. Half a mile left to run in the 1998 Dubai World Cup. And up front, Barons and Jerry Bailey have the lead. Silver Charm is now the danger in second. Here comes Malik in third place. On the outside in fourth is Swain. 
then picking them up is Lou Savage. Down the straight they come, and it's Barrett, Silver Charm, and Malik. These are the three at the head of affairs. Picking them up on the far side is Lou Savage. Here comes Swain this side. Silver Charm goes for gold. It's Silver Charm from Lou Savage from France on the far side. Barrett's back in third. Malik is in fourth, and it's Lou Savage on the far side. He's beaten at the moment. It's Lou Savage. Silver Charm, Malik in third. On the outside, it's Swain, but it's Lou Savage. But Silver Charm comes again. This is incredible. Swain is flying. Swain might beat the favourite. What a finishing prospect. Silver Charm and Swain. It's a photo. It's a great photo finish to the Dubai World Cup. Who's won it? Silver Charm or Swain on the outside. A truly sensational finish. Well, it was a very narrow win to uh, Silver Charm. Bob Baffert, of course, hopes that he can go uh, uh, do it again this year uh, with um, Captain Steve. Well, then we uh, came to 1990 and the uh, Godolphin stable, they were firing again because this time the horse was Almerta Wakel. up then to the the year 2000 and uh, for the uh, Dubai World Cup uh, last year uh, the rather aptly named Dubai Millennium emerged triumphant place is worldly manner Barons is beginning to stay on running stack makes ground on the leaders towards the outside that's the leading five as they hit the four pole staying on in fifth place is public purse indigenous is under the whip here they come round towards the home straight three left to run and it's still Dubai Millennium Barons comes with a run running stack is also right there as well that's the one two three this is incredible just look at this Dubai Millennium is streaking away Barons can do no more in second Running Stag is staying on all the time. It's a one-horse race. It's Dubai Millennium. Here comes Frankie Dutroy. Dubai Millennium is annihilating them. He's romping away. This is the wonder horse. Dubai Millennium is coming home well clear in the Millennium Dubai World Cup. What a performance. Dubai Millennium wins it. Forget Alfin. In second place is Barron's public purse was third and staying off from nowhere to be caught. Well, of course, uh, from last year, we've now arrived in the year 2001. And uh, this Dubai World Cup, richest race in the world, uh, has attracted uh, international horses. And um, the Kentucky Derby... Uh